Hi, Algebra 2. We are heading into lessons 10 and 11. These are your last few lessons before our next quiz. And here we're going to be working on connecting equations to graphs. Here we go. Going on to 10.2, that's a typo right there. We're going to be looking at three different equations. We're going to focus on equations 1 and 2 together. And these again are looking at equations dealing with games and rides at an amusement park and how much money we're going to spend. So the first equation we're looking at is x plus y equals 20. x is representing the number of games we play and y is representing the number of rides. So first, what's the number of rides the student could get on if they don't play any games? So if we don't play any games, how many rides could we get on or what's our y going to be if we spend all $20? And hopefully you're seeing that that would be 20 rides. Over on our axis here, we have on the x-axis is tracking the number of games. So in this case, that's zero. And then the number of rides, we want that to be 20. And so that point is going to be right there. I could write this as a coordinate point as 0, 20. In number 2, we're looking at what's the number of games the student could play if they don't get on any rides. So what's the number of games? That's x if they don't do any rides. That's our y. And hopefully you're seeing that to make this equation true, x would need to equal 20. Or our point would be 20, 20. Zero. That's going to be right here on the graph showing that we're playing 20 games and no rides. On number three, you're going to draw a line to connect the two points you've drawn. I would highly recommend using a ruler to do this and draw that line nice and straight. Number four, complete the sentences. If the student played no games, they can get on, and we just saw 20 rides in this case. For every additional game that the student plays, the possible number of rides, y, increases or decreases by what? So let's fill in these blanks. If they play an additional game right here, so if they play one extra game, the number of rides they can go on decreases by one. So it'd be decreases by one. And I can see this by looking at this example point right here, this green one. If we go on, or if we play four games, we can go on 16 rides. If we play five games, that means we can go on 15 rides. So the number of rides we went on decreased by one. Number five is asking us about the slope of our graph. So think back to last year. Let's make a slope triangle. Find two points that are kind of easy to use on the line. Make a slope triangle. And then let's find the distances. On the x-axis, this distance from 10 to 16 is 6. The y-axis, we had a distance from 4 to 10, so that is 6. So my slope, remember, was rise over run, so that's going to be 6 over 6, or 1, but it is going downhill, so remember it's going to be negative 1. Where does the graph intersect the vertical axis? That's going to be right up here. We call that our y-intercept, and it's going to be at the point 0, 20. In number six, we're going to rearrange the equation to solve for y. So I want to get y all by itself. So I'm going to get rid of this x by subtracting x from both sides of the equation. On the left, I'm just left with y. I have my equal sign right here. And on the right, I cannot combine those like terms. So I'm going to write negative x plus 20. They are not like terms, so I cannot put them together. In number seven, what connections, if any, do you notice between your new equation and the graph? So here's our new equation. This negative x, remember that is the same as negative 1x. And if I look up to number 5, notice that my slope was negative 1. Here's that negative 1 showing up in the equation. The y-intercept was at 20. Here's 20 showing up in the equation. So thinking back to last year, remember that this is going to be your slope in the equation. This is going to be your y-intercept in the equation. And I want you to write this down as well. y equals mx plus b. That's the general form of what we just saw, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. We call this the slope-intercept form for a line. Okay, going on to our second equation. This is the equation we're going to use on this one. So it would be 250x, x is representing the number of games, plus y representing the number of rides, equals 15. So in this case, each game costs $250, and each ride is $1. Remember, there's a 1 there, even though it's invisible. So number 1, what's the number of rides a student could get on if they don't play any games? So no games means that my x value is 0. And in that case, 
this whole part is just zero, so y is going to equal 15. On the graph, that would look like the point zero, because that's my x is zero, comma, 15, and it's going to be right there. In number two, what's the number of games the student could ride if they could play if they don't get on any rides? So now my y is zero, rides is zero, and I'm figuring out what x would need to be to make this true. So I'm going to rewrite this as just 250x equals 15. I don't need that zero in there. I'm going to divide both sides by 250. And in that case, I would end up with 1x equals 6. Or in that case, if we ride, or if we play six games, we're going to ride zero rides. So on the graph, that's going to be right here. Remember, your x-axis is right here, representing that 6. And the y-axis with the number of rides is up there. Number three, draw a line to connect the two points that you've drawn. So I did that. Use a ruler. Make it as straight as you can. Number four, complete the sentences. If the student plays no games, they can get on, and we know that's going to be 15 rides. If there's no games, 15 rides. For every additional game that the student plays, X, the possible number of rides, Y, increases or decreases by what? This one is a little bit more difficult to solve on this problem or in this equation. So let's go on to number five first because it's going to help us with it. What is the slope of your graph? Let's make a, a slope triangle. This one, the points are a little bit harder to pick out. So I'm just going to use the only two points that I know for sure. And that's my X and Y intercepts. So the lengths of these sides of my triangle would be 6 and 15. Slope is rise over run, so that would be 15 over 6. When I simplify that, that would be 2 and a half. My, my line goes downhill, so I know that that has to be negative or a negative slope. So now going back to number 4, for every additional game that the student plays x, that means if x increases by 1, the number of possible rides y is going to decrease by 2 and a half. And that seems a little weird in this problem because it's not like you can take half a ride on a carnival ride, but that's just how the problem works out and how the money works out in this one. Where does the graph intersect the vertical axis? That's going to be right here. So that's going to be at the point 0, 15. Okay, now we're going to, in number 6, rearrange the equation to solve for y, meaning I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract... 2.5x from both sides, and I end up with just y on the left equals negative 2.5x plus 15. And again, this should look familiar because this negative 2.5 ends up being the slope. This 15 is our y-intercept. Remember, y equals mx plus b. We just rearrange the equation into that form and m is our slope, and b is the y-intercept. Make sure that you have that written down so you can refer back to it. Here's a few notes to take at the end of lesson 10. Let's say we had this equation right here, and you're going to graph it. Um, this is what, in what we call standard form, where you have x plus y equals a number. Now to graph it, here's what I would do. I would set up a table and I would say that I'm going to plug in 0 for x, and I'm going to figure out what y needs to be if x is 0. Then I'm going to plug in 0 for y, and I'm going to figure out what x needs to be if y was 0. Here's where they're doing that. Here we plugged in 0 for y, so they're doing this one right down here. Put in 0 for y, and then they simplified their equation. They divided both sides by 17.5, and they get x to be 40 right here. Now over here, they're putting in 0 for x. They simplify the equation. They divide both sides by 12.5, and they get y to be 56 right here. So now these are two points. If you turn these into coordinate points that you can graph, and then remember, you only need two points to make a line. So you connect those, and then that's your graph. Here's a few more notes to write down. If we start with that equation again, remember this was called standard form. Sometimes it's easiest to rearrange this into what we call slope-intercept form because then we know the slope and the y-intercept. And so here they're rearranging. They subtracted 17.5 from both sides. That's what they're doing right here. And then they divide both sides by 12.5. 
When they do that, they're really taking 700 divided by 12.5, which is 56 right here. And then they took 17.5 divided by 12.5 to get this negative 1.4 right here. And remember in slope intercept form, that number that's being multiplied by x is your slope. And then the other number that's being added or subtracted on is the y intercept. We could rewrite this as y equals negative 1.4x plus 56 to better match that y equals mx plus b form that we usually see.